All right, let's cut to the chase. Mosquitoes aren't just annoying bloodsuckers. They're bioengineers with PhDs in nanotechnology. While you're busy scratching your arm, they're conducting a covert surgical operation. Without anesthesia, and without you noticing. Spooky? Wait till you hear the rest. Now, have you ever wondered why scientists are so obsessed with studying bugs, fish, and birds? Just nerdy curiosity? Not quite. Welcome to the world of biomimetics, where researchers take inspiration from nature's oddball creations and turn them into actual, functioning technology. You see a dragonfly, they see a drone prototype. You see a jellyfish, they see underwater robots. Let's be real, your body is already a high-tech surveillance system. Eyes that detect light waves, ears that capture sound vibrations, skin that feels pressure and temperature, a tongue that runs chemical analysis on everything from coffee to questionable leftovers. Impressive, right? Now compare that to animals, and suddenly, you're the amateur. Take the elephant nose fish, for instance. It lives in murky waters, practically blind, and yet it navigates perfectly. How? It emits electric fields around itself, then senses the tiniest distortions like living in a biological version of underwater VR. Scientists saw this and thought, what if we made sensors that can detect microbial movement in water, like this fish? Or better yet, spy on bacteria plotting a rebellion? And bats? Oh, bats are the OG sonar engineers. They see with sound. Engineers borrowed this genius move to help smart cars park without taking out flower pots and lamp posts. Beep, beep, thank the bat. But wait, it gets weirder. There's a species of beetle that can sniff out forest fires from 80 kilometers away. Why? Because it lays its eggs in burnt wood. Romantic, I know. Scientists went, why not create smoke detectors that are faster and more sensitive than our noses? Like beetle noses. This is where we get into the wild territory of electronic noses. These devices can sniff out chemicals just like the real deal. Only difference? Instead of saying, hmm, vanilla, it says, trace elements of trinitrotoluene detected. Evacuate immediately. They're already being used to check for spoiled food, gas leaks, and believe it or not, some cancers. Imagine going to the doctor and being told, just smell this. Oh dear, you've got bronchitis. But let's get back to our queen of bioengineering, the mosquito. When she bites you, she doesn't just poke a needle in and suck. No, no, no. She uses a six-part microsurgical tool set. Some parts vibrate to reduce friction. Others inject anesthetics so you don't feel the prick. It's the ninja of syringes. Engineers saw this and thought, we're stealing that. Thus began the quest for painless medical needles inspired by mosquito mouths. Imagine going to get vaccinated and saying, wait, that was it? Now, let's visit the Mimosa Pudicatha shy plant. Touch its leaves and boom, they curl up instantly. No drama, no debate, just full-on plant panic. Inspired by this, engineers design materials and devices that react instantly to danger. Think helmets that harden on impact, or smart clothing that tightens around fatigued muscles. The future of gym gear, plants, and bees? Bees are adorable and also hardcore communicators. When a bee finds a good flower patch, it goes home and performs an interpretive dance to tell the others. It's like TikTok, but with pollen. This inspired research in swarm robotics, robots that communicate using motion alone. Ideal for drones in disaster zones where signals can't get through. Some scientists mad, in the best way, are working on mimicking birds' ability to sense Earth's magnetic field. Birds literally have built-in GPS. If we can crack that, we could create navigation systems that don't rely on satellites, which, let's be honest, sometimes flake out like bad Wi-Fi. Even the octopus joined the party. It can change both color and texture on demand. That inspired smart skin technologies, materials that adjust depending on light, temperature, or mood. Yes, mood. Imagine wearing a jacket that changes color when you're angry. Fashion, but with feelings. But here's the twist. We're not just copying nature for the sake of it. 
We're trying to understand its underlying principles. Nature doesn't build stuff the way we do it's on another level. For example, spider silk is stronger than steel by weight. And ants? They carry objects 20 times their body weight, while managing traffic better than most humans. How's that for efficiency? The tricky part isn't the idea, it's the execution. It's easy to say, let's build a sensor like a fish, but actually replicating biological. Systems is like trying to recreate a symphony using spoons and a rubber band. Nature builds things using nanostructures, organic compounds, and self-healing mechanisms. Meanwhile, we've got duct tape. This is where AI steps in. Because environmental signals are messy, machines need to learn to distinguish between just sweaty and leak in the gas pipe, or between a human approaching and fan is wobbly. So now, Scientists are mixing biology, engineering, and artificial intelligence. It's a chaotic blend of disciplines, but it works. Sometimes. This isn't just about cool gadgets anymore. It's a philosophy. A way of seeing the world. You stop looking at nature as a backdrop and start seeing it as a library of ideas. Every feather, every scent trail, every creepy bug leg is engineering baked into it. In the not-so-distant future, we might have contact lenses that see infrared, clothes that change shape based on temperature, or stress-detecting sensors that stop you from sending that regrettable 3M text. And the real question won't be, who invented it? It'll be, who copied nature better? So next time a mosquito lands on you, maybe salute her. She's not just there to ruin your evening. She might just be teaching the next generation of engineers. Brought to you by someone who listens to bugs, and sometimes, answers back. Don't ghost us. Hit subscribe and let's keep the weird thoughts rolling. Catch you next time on The Thinkery.